good morning from Nongkyo, Laos. We've just gotten up, it's about 6.30 and are walking to the viewpoint which is supposed to be amazing but uh, on our way to the viewpoint we walk along the main road and there is a either a morning market or a weekend market, it's Saturday and it's pretty lively for 6 a.m. people are selling food uh, all types of produce but also like home goods and clothing first we have to make a stop at the ATM because we uh, we forgot to do it back in town and grab some money because our Goal. Our goal today is to go to Mung Oi, and Mung Oi doesn't have an ATM. Uh, there's only one in town here in Nongkyo, and uh, apparently a year ago it wasn't working, so we're gonna check. If it isn't working, we're screwed. We gotta go back to Longpuban because we don't have enough cash. <sighs> Learn from our mistake. Whenever you're in a big town or a big city, before you trek out, grab cash. As much as you can. Yeah. All right, the ATM was working. Thank oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I need to update the Google reviews. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Laura read that the ATM wasn't working, so we're a little anxious that that it wasn't, and uh, we'd have to turn back and go to Long Pobang today. Yeah. Uh, but we were able to get some money out. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind that if you come to Nam Kiel, get some money out beforehand. Yes. Uh, there is only one ATM in town that we know of. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's a, it looks like a safe, secure one. It's next to a police office. Yeah. But um, just in case, because it's one ATM for a whole village, <laughs> you know. So it's yeah, we're thinking that a lot of the locals don't have bank accounts or use the ATMs, which is why there's only one. Yeah, but just in case, like it's probably best to bring lots of cash. <laughs> yeah, uh, the ATM is on the other side of the bridge. Uh, so if I mean, there's only like one main bridge here. Uh, it's on the left side, right next to the police station, so it is secure somewhat. Anyways, we're walking to the viewpoint. Let's go. halfway getting to this point is actually a little strenuous I say that this hike is intermediate level because of how steep it is and the elevation we're about a thousand thousand meters up right now uh, the tallest point is I think 2,000 meters or at least what I read on the sign below I may be wrong but I'm already tired I'm sweating Laura's already gassed up as well uh, it's early in the day we haven't eaten this is the first thing that we've done today because we wanted to get it uh, done before we head to Mong Oi. Anyways, yeah. make sure you get a good meal in you and you get a good stretch because we this rushing. hike will uh, will definitely challenge you if you if you aren't a regular hiker. So there's a strange buzzing just behind these bushes. Not entirely sure what it is, but it sounds like like a group of bees buzzing or maybe some cicadas. Yeah. Can you hear that? It just it, it, Yeah, the sound goes in and out, so I think it can sense our presence and is a uh, changing changing its frequency. It's pretty neat. Update we did not make it to the top uh, we actually turned around because at one point while going through the dark forest uh seriously it was really dark and yeah, it looked like, like a scene out of sleepy hollow or something like at 80 percent like uh, there's a point uh where you're like maybe 75 or 80 percent uh up and yeah. you get to a really dense jungle yeah and um at that point it started um Getting, it got really dark first because it was dense and then um, it just started kind of raining and then it and was really windy and really windy so yeah. we were huddled in between two big trees yeah. uh, talking about what we should do should we wait it out should we and then go continue up or should we come back down and ultimately we decided to come back down so yeah. we put on our ponchos and like made it back down and now 
that we're uh, heading back down, it's like a lot clearer. Well, it's uh, still raining a little bit, but yeah. it's not as uh, <laughs> strong as it was earlier. You make it to the top? Yes, yeah, after you. Hi. Okay. <laughs> we thought we were alone on this trail because we hadn't seen anybody go up or down, but apparently this guy made it up. <laughs> yeah, he was probably waiting it <laughs> he, out. He probably got up there. Earlier. Uh, earlier in the day we were we were considering going up during sunrise so we would we have so. missed the rain altogether but we w we might have been stuck up there for a little bit to to let it pass but yeah it was really windy and yeah dark. yeah so we made the judgment call to turn around just because we'd rather be safe than sorry but if you are in Nongkeel and the weather is nice um, I would definitely suggest taking this hike and uh, going to the viewpoint because or if you have more time yeah because we want to make the 10 o'clock uh, yeah. 10 30 boat ride up to yeah um, yeah Mungnoi? Mung Mungoi. Mungoi, yeah. yeah so I mean like weather and then also time yeah uh, are two factors that made us decide to turn around yes but yeah we're gonna go back into town grab something to eat and pack then... our things and then head to Mungoi. hopefully the boats are running so this isn't the very very top but it is uh, just below the halfway point and the view is still stunning. So in Nongkyo, the clouds hang really really low and there is a perpetual mist that hangs over the town and it looks really really you, cool. You heard the thunder? Yeah, do you hear that? I hear it, yeah. <sighs> so uh, the thunderstorm is moving north so it's getting a little quieter as it moves further into the distance. But imagine hearing that on top of the mountain. Yeah, it and it was... Uh, uh, it was coming pretty quickly, so like the thunder was like back to back to back. Yeah. Which means the storm is really close. I wish we recorded it, but it was a little freaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just trying to get the heck out of there as soon as possible. They're all boys. Do you huh. drink a Waiting at the boat pier in Nongkyo now. I've just purchased our tickets. The boat leaves at 10:30. Each ticket was 25,000 keep, which is uh, just under three dollars one way. There are two boats per day: one at 10:30 and one at 2:30. And if you miss those, then there's no way to get up there. Um, but apparently, there's only one boat uh, returning from Mung Oi. But I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Um, there's a sign posted here at the boat office. It's a little faded, but uh, it's still quite legible. Uh, you just go up to the front, get your ticket, and you just write your name on the on the like docking papers, and then that's it. And you, now we're just waiting. So the boat the boat isn't the biggest. There's probably like, I don't know, how many people on here? Like 25 people? 25 people. I mean, yeah, we're, getting, we're getting pretty comfortable here. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm on a refugee boat. No, the one in Vietnam yeah. was like a refugee yeah, this is this is a tight squeeze. Uh, it's almost 11 o'clock. The uh, departure time is supposed to be 10.30, but... We're in Asia. Nothing. Nothing starts on time here. Mm. Too many. Uh, they're still. They're still packing some bags onto the boat and are gonna try to squeeze some more people on. I think. But uh, yeah, I think it's a hour, hour and a half ride to our final destination, Mungoi. Uh, but this boat, this boat, looks like it carries supplies. Uh, to Mungoi because the only way to get there is by boat. So you have people with rice and boxes of various goods. 
people are transporting bicycles yeah, for their kids up there. Someone's birthday. <laughs> and it looks like it's somebody's birthday, yeah? Yeah, because the bikes, new bikes. Uh, <laughs> We're here. Wow, that was a, it wasn't a rough ride. It was just a little cramped. Yeah. Uh, the seats aren't padded at all. So prepare to have your legs stiffen up just a little bit. But uh, as soon as you get off of the boat, there are several people waiting on the stairs asking if you need some lodging. But we already have one in mind. We're gonna walk to check it out. Here. Laura and I have just checked in to the guest house. Recommended by uh, a friend. Yeah, recommended by a friend that we met recently in Long Pabang. I guess his friend owns this place. It's called Latanak Bongsa Guest House. It's right at the top of the stairs where you get off the boat. Uh, it's literally the first one on your left hand side. That was probably the quickest uh, check in ever. We just, yeah. we walked up to uh, the neighboring guest house, but nobody was around. So we walked next door to uh, Latanak Bongsa and uh, just asked to look at a room. And uh, 30 seconds later, we got it tip for everybody that is coming here book while you're here like just walk up to a place and just check in uh, booking it online ahead of time will be a little more expensive so you just book on site and it'll be a little cheaper for you it's Laura says it's 30% more expensive she checked online before Wow. so yeah you can negotiate a price on site as well. So do that anyways. We're gonna have lunch. Yeah, this is how much we're paying a night. Look, look, look. We'll put the price here, how much it is. That's USD. Such a good deal. Uh, in Mong Bang, we were paying uh, 25 a night uh, for something a little nicer. And then in Nong Kyo, we paid about 24 a night. So I just book on site. It'll be a lot cheaper. We just had lunch at the guest house and it was Less extremely than... underwhelming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a little pricey for, for what you get and for how it tastes, but mm -hmm. it's all good. It's just sustenance. But we're, we're now walking along the main road here and the main road is just about 400 meters. This is really all there is All there is uh, in this town. We're looking at the, the menu. Population, the population is about 700 people, but uh, Mungoy is significant because uh, it's home to these mountains and caves that yeah. used to house people, uh, provide refuge during the bombings of Laos between 1963 uh, and 1972, or roughly that time frame, uh, during which there was a civil war, but also uh, a lot of political instability. And a lot of those, those bombing missions were conducted by the United States over 280 million bombs were dropped in the entire country of Laos, making it the most heavily bombed country in the world per capita. Mm -hmm. And Mung Oi, like many places across Laos, were impacted by this uh, devastation. Uh, and you can still see some of the effects of that today. Uh, some of these restaurants and guest houses have used these bomb containers as decor. It's kind of sad to see, but at the same time, uh, an important part of Lao history and so as a, as a Lao American I really uh, take that to heart and try to share it as much as possible. If you are interested in learning more about it and how you can help out, check out Legacies of War uh, or MAG. Uh, MAG stands for Mines Advisory Group. Drop. Much cooler here, huh? 
a beautiful reflection of the water right there. I think this is it right here. This is here. There's like a pool inside. Oh. One fish. Go, babe. Yeah? <laughs> I just get scared of spider webs. Okay. Oh, this doesn't go too far. No, just the. Uh, there's like a the small rides. pool. With some fish. And there's some fish in there. Yeah, so a natural pool. I wonder if it goes underneath if uh, if you swim, like if there's a crevice under there, but it's kind of hard to tell without a flashlight. But Is that an opening back there? Does it go up? <laughs> what did right. you? So, there's a, so you come to the back and it, it doesn't look like the cave goes any further, but there's a small opening <laughs> that, uh, that goes up and there like, are- Like some steps. There are some steps, so it looks like someone or people created these steps and it goes up and there's a another tier kind of like a loft uh, and then there's like another tier and then you look to your right at the top of the steps and there's another opening and uh, right right kind of at the corner of uh, where that opening begins is a bowl and there's something in the bowl and something next to the bowl and it looks uh, quite uh, aged it's like it's covered in mud and uh, it's probably this is this probably used to be someone's home or people found refuge here during during the war when there were lots of bombs. Wow, it's a little creepy. It's a little creepy. <laughs> this is where the opening is. Right there. Make sure to bring a flashlight. What are we doing? Having a beer. Wow. A nice Cooling cold off. beer. Cooling off after a long walk in the sun. Exactly. Perfect way to wrap it up. Got a nice view here. <clears throat> Got some, what is that? Got the mountain here. Yeah. And a rice field. Yeah. And the river. Funny thing happened. I don't know if you can see the people behind me. I think they, they work here, or at least one of them does. But uh, as soon as Laura and I walk in, the woman behind me, who's talking right now, uh, asked if we would like something to drink or eat in English. And uh, I responded in Lao, saying that I wanted a beer Lao, a large beer Lao, because they are different sizes. And then she just like yelped, like really loud, like a big yelp. Uh, and I immediately thought that she's probably laughing because she can instantly tell that I'm a foreigner. Um, yeah, being here is quite interesting because uh, as a Lao American, as a, as a Lao American, I sort of stand out. Like, yeah, I can, I'm Lao, and yeah, I can speak some Lao, but uh, the natives here can differentiate almost immediately whether or not you are actually from here or not. Uh, and so that's sort of the. Uh, sort of the downfall of it is because uh, as much as I want to blend in that'll never happen uh, yeah. because like I'm not from here or at least I wasn't born and raised here they even ask if you are Asian yeah so they were a little confused as to if I was Lao or not uh, they thought I might have been Japanese they knew for sure I was Asian but not Lao uh, but yeah <laughs> so like sort of in this perpetual foreigner state, uh, traveling through Laos, and you know that's that's okay with me because I'm I'm not from here, but it does make it hard to identify with uh, those that are from here. So in a way, I'm kind of like I go back and forth, but that's just the reality of it. And then living in America, uh, being an Asian, I'm always like that perpetual foreigner as well. I don't like, know if anybody else, yeah, like where are you from or. Like, what language do you speak? Must be something exotic. 
uh, and I know that a lot of my Asian American friends feel the same way, but uh, you know, the tough part I think that a lot of people can uh, relate to is being a like perpetual foreigner in the country that their parents are from, whether you be Lao or uh, Mexican or Thai or Chinese, whatever it is, right? Whenever you go home, you sort of feel out of place as well because they know that you're not from there. But if you can relate, let us know in the comments below like what your, what your journey has been uh, assimilating and navigating multiple cultures. All right, so going back to what I was saying earlier about feeling like a, you know, a foreigner in this homeland, that's inevitable. And uh, it kind of leads to my next point about uh, pricing as well. There's a discrepancy. Uh, there's always a discrepancy, or so it seems, and really at the discretion of the seller or the vendor or whoever you're speaking with. The place that we're just having a beer at, uh, the sign in English is selling beer for 15k and water for 6k and that's in English and then have a sign on the wall that's in Lao that mm -hmm. says 12 and 5 and uh, my assumption is that that's also beer and water mm -hmm. and uh, so you sort of further played, you sort of like did poker face like yeah sort like of confirmed you knew, like you knew you sort of played it out like you knew how to read Lao yeah in a way but I didn't it's because another woman came up to the shop and she had purchased two beer and she asked how much and he said that it was 12,000 or sip song pun. So when I went to pay for the beer and a water, which according to the Lao pricing would be 17, uh, he charged me 21, the 15 and six. And uh, I asked him in Lao, isn't it 12 and 15? And he was like, oh, uh, sia ka pasi, which is, uh, you know, I have to pay tax. <laughs> Foreigner tax. <laughs> so, I mean, even, even though I'm Lao, and you can speak and understand. And can speak it. It's like, it, unfortunately, I don't get like, I don't get loud people pricing either, and that's just the way it is. Um, like at some points you do, uh, you know, you're able to pay like twenty versus twenty one. Yeah. Uh. And I was like, and he was, I, I stopped him in his tracks because you pointed because he out. like hesitated and he looked at the sign and he was like, oh, there's tax, and. Uh, I gave him 1000 less and he was like okay but yeah. honestly it's not it's not the price that bothers me it's the principle mm -hmm. and uh, this is what really irks me about traveling and it's sort of inevitable and I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because everyone has to go through it as well is being looked at like we're walking wallets or pocketbooks right like just yeah. because we're traveling doesn't mean we're rich uh, we try to be as frugal as possible and we budget for our travels but that doesn't mean we have so much money to just throw away yeah. and, and they can take advantage of us. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Rant over. Yeah, rant over. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we're going to end the vlog here because the battery's about to die. And we're just going to chill. But hope you enjoyed walking around Lungoy with us. And, well, pretty much like our busy, busy day today. Hiking. Yeah, dude, then, we did so much. And then taking the boat up here. You know, getting the guest house, having lunch, and walking. Yeah, all of this. Whew. there's a lot going on today. Yeah, but um, Lots of yeah. If you have any questions or need some tips about how to get to and from Longpabang to Nongkyo to Mongoy, like feel free to reach out to us in the comments, and uh, we'll be happy to share anything that we know. But yeah, peace.